Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartuk-89. Last time on the Bard's podcast, the party arrived safely in Fort Myers, but were relieved of their weapons as per Fort policy. While initially put off by the request, the group surmised that if only the guards had weapons, then they should be safe while within the confines of the settlement. Fargus and Karina took the mounts over to the livery while the other four individuals headed off to locate Hagrid Toulouse for their meeting. We rejoin Lady Irena and Bulger the Sailor as they head off down one of the side streets with a large amount of inns. Let's start over here at that one. It's by the apothecary, stated Lady Irena. As the duo approached Bulger, the former sailor asked the mage if she thought the business would take the iron spikes obtained from the manacor. She thought for a moment as she headed to the door of the Silver Peace Inn and concluded that most likely that was the best spot for a transaction. Bulger turned over the sack of spikes to the mage and advised her that she was prettier and would have a better chance of getting a good deal than he would. She argued about splitting up for the moment, but Bulger waved off the concern. No one has any weapons in this town and we're only asking questions. Let's get twice as much work done in half the time. He gave her a gentle shove and despite her concerns moved over to the apothecary shop while the gnome entered the inn. Bulger stepped inside the dimly lit establishment and observed several patrons sitting around the common room. Some ate, some spoke with associates, and others were playing cards. The former sailor noticed that it didn't register that everyone in the building appeared to be half-orc in nature. He approached the innkeeper who had a nasty scar running the length of his face and barked out an inquiry to Bulger as to the nature of his visit. Attempting to be charming, Bulger was polite and quite kind to the man who gave the appearance that he'd rather see the gnome dead than to speak with him. The innkeeper listened to a few questions about Hagrid Toulouse as if he had checked in and he thought for a moment. A few moments later the half-orc exhibited a toothy grin and shook his head Tall, fat man, a human, lots of coin? Questioned the innkeeper. Bulger nodded his head to and fro and admitted that he had never met the man. The businessman put his green hand onto his chin and rubbed it in a thoughtful manner. Bulger felt that the man was attempting to remember the room number, but in reality, several patrons quietly left the common room to creep up the stairs behind the delver. <sighs> yes, now I remember. Mr. Toulouse is upstairs. Second room on the left. Said he was waiting for an individual like you. Go up, kind sir. Don't want to keep the man waiting. Bulger pushed a hand into his pocket and attempted to fish out a gold piece, but the innkeeper waved him off. No need for that, kind sir. I'm sure Mr. Toulouse will handle that issue. The former sailor broke into a smile and thought it was quite kind of the individual to refuse the tip. He thanked the scarred creature before heading up the stairs. Once on the landing, Bulger recalled which door it was and began to knock, but caught himself. Hmm, the gnome said. I wonder how this Toulouse would know who I was or what I looked like. That seems strange, he mused. He shrugged off a thought and knocked on the door and found that it opened quickly. A pair of arms grabbed the squat demi-human and dragged him into the room before it slammed shut. Noise of a fight could be heard in the empty hallway but no one was present to hear it. Meanwhile, at the apothecary shop, we find Lady Irena discussing the battle with a manacore to the owner who was focused on the story as much as the cleavage the elven woman wasn't showing. As she finished, the man refocused his attention to her face. Nothing that the wandering eyes had spotted, she apologized profusely. I'm sorry, ma'am. Very sorry, in fact. It's just that we get very few elves in this part of Fartook, and it's rare to find one so attractive and alone. The mage rolled her eyes and reiterated that she was not alone and she was merely attempting to sell manacore spikes to the vander. He apologized again and took out a looking glass to inspect the items closer. Hmm, indeed. This is interesting. 
muttered the businessman as he inspected the spikes. Putting down the items on the table, he proudly announced that the items were indeed manacore spikes. An exasperated maid shook her head and repeated that she already knew what they were. She wanted to know if he was interested in purchasing them. Oh my, oh yes, I'd love to buy these items. I'm currently working on a potion of heroism, and the scripts I am using call for manacore spikes or the horn of a... But he was cut off in midstream. How much for how many? stated the elven maiden. The man banged the spikes against the counter and tested the weight of each one before inquiring if 50 gold pieces for each of the four spikes would be acceptable. Lady Irena nodded, but then asked if the individual had any healing potions that she could take in trade. The man's face lit up at the offer and shook his head rapidly. Oh my, oh yes, yes, we can do a trade. That works quite well. Lady Irena inquired as to how many potions she could trade for the spikes for and the man took a shrewd appearance but faltered as he replied four, one for each spike. The elf maiden felt that she could do better and countered, requesting six potions, but the man countered again with the offer of five. Both parties smiling, they shook on the deal and the man gave her five small vials as he took the spikes. With business concluded, the man asked where the rest of her group was. Feeling that a modicum of trust had been achieved, the mage pointed out that they were searching for Hagrid Toulouse and asked if the businessman knew of him. The alchemist confirmed that he had heard of him, but he usually resides in a small house on the main straightaway in town, but sometimes uses an inn for secret of business. Irena pointed out that Bolger was next door inquiring about the man at that location. The man seemed perplexed and confirmed that Bolger was next door and he was a human, but Irena corrected him on the race. The apothecarian's face went white and quickly pointed out that as a gnome, her friend was in danger at that establishment. Lady Irena grabbed the potions and raced outside. Cutting across the alley, she heard a loud crash and looked up. A half-orc had gone through the window on the second story and landed with a thud in the middle of the street. The angle of the neck made it acutely aware that the creature was dead. Spotting the open, broken window, Lady Irena noticed a familiar gnome fighting with two half-orcs and not having an easy time of it. Bounding in through the indoors, the innkeeper yelled at her to stop, but she raced up the stairs to assist her associate. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.